Our founders created a constitution designed to allow for change and accommodate the will of the people. Oppressive institutions that existed early in our history, such as slavery and the prohibition of women's rights, eventually failed as the will of the American people demanded change. Though change comes slowly and is often met with strong resistance, the promise of freedom continues to be the engine that breaks down that resistance and moves us toward an increasingly just society. One American institution that spans our country's history and uniquely reflects progress and changes in our society is the United States Military Academy at West Point. West Point has faced moral and ethical crises in its 219-year history. A civil war wrenched the school apart, with West Point officers fighting on both sides. Discrimination against various minorities based on long-held traditions at the academy would also be difficult to overcome. One of the first black cadets, Benjamin O. Davis Jr., faced bitter discrimination during his time at the academy. But by the time he graduated in 1936, his perseverance had earned the respect of his classmates. Davis would go on to command the Tuskegee Airmen during World War II. He retired in 1998 as a highly decorated lieutenant general, and in 2002, West Point's new addition, Davis Barracks, was named in his honor. Female cadets at West Point, an experience I witnessed firsthand when a uh, question was asked of a very, very senior officer who was a graduate and uh, he was speaking at a Founders Day dinner and the question was asked, uh, your opinion of uh, female cadets at West Point and the service academies and he, without pause, said, it'll never happen. And I can remember, uh, I guess there was a national fight about that, and women entered and the world didn't end. In 1976, West Point opened its doors to 119 women, often facing public outcries. Today, 20% of West Point cadets are female. Since those days, West Point has seen the cadets led by a female first captain and a black first captain, the highest cadet rank. Diversity has become integral to the success and strength of West Point. Each time the academy faced challenges, it has stepped up to adhere to its core belief. Duty, honor, country. The code which those words perpetuate embraces the highest moral law and will stand the test of any ethics or philosophies ever promulgated for the uplift of mankind. General MacArthur in May of 1962 gave his duty, honor, country address to uh, the cadets at West Point. I had already graduated, but I have listened to the recording many times. I have read the speech. I have to say it's, it's a part of who I am. I think I can say that is true for 99.9% .9 of the graduates. The honor system is, is a system that without it, I don't think West Point could survive. Uh, because you learn to trust your classmates uh, with your life. And when you get out in the service, you expect that and you get it in return. We find that that's what you get when you get into service. West Point, for their overall grade that they get, they get what's called a cumulative grade point average. That's really coming from uh, academically, militarily, physically, and there is a character development component that's part of that. I think in the four years that I've been here, duty, honor, and country, I've 
really been ingrained into both me and every other cadet here at the academy. And I think that that's going to be the guidestone that really helps us with any hard decision we have in the future. When cadets graduate, as, as they move on, as well as what they do throughout their Army career, or after they get out, they're representing those values of duty, honor, country, and it's all surrounded, sort of a encompassing theme of character. Doing the right thing, caring about others, and making sure that that's guiding what you do. And it really doesn't matter where, once again, where you come from. Most of my classmates and my friends uh, who are graduates, you take the honor system with you, and you really believe in that, and you live it. And I think it changes your life to a large degree. Today, the Academy is focused on inspiring and admitting diverse, high-caliber young men and women. The individual that brings their strength, talent, and commitment to serve the greater good is the cornerstone for success at West Point. I applied for the Invitational Academic Workshop during my junior year in high school and had the opportunity to spend a week of my summer between junior and senior year in high school there and got to take classes and kind of live the life of a cadet for a week and I was just awed by the place. I was really drawn to that feeling of being a part of something bigger than yourself and serving a higher purpose and that's really what drew me to attend West Point. I chose to come to West Point because I knew I always wanted to serve my country somehow, uh, preferably overseas. I knew I wanted to go to college and I figured a military academy was the best way to get in my military service and get a great college education. As cadets begin their 47-month adventure, you know, once again, they're coming from all walks of life, but part of that comes from their development. It's really all about their development. The West Point Office of Diversity, Inclusion and Equal Opportunity asserts that more can be achieved when there are more people to choose from. It is good for education, businesses, and any organization when inclusion of a variety of different people is allowed. There will be communication, respect, and trust with each other. It is a critical thing going forward. At West Point, one is in a leadership factory. By necessity, the Army needs all the best people that it can find and people who want to be the best that they can be. And in that sense, uh, it has become de facto an agent of social change. We all know that from diversity comes strength and differing people with differing views and ways of doing things only make any organization stronger. Uh, I, I, not everyone realizes the military has been at the forefront of movements that uh, incorporate diversity for a long time, uh, integration in the military, etc. Toward the end of the Vietnam era and the beginning of the volunteer army, uh, there was increased emphasis on diversity at the service academies. So beginning in the 70s, and until today, we have seen uh, increased numbers and a representative percentage of entering classes being minorities. And that meant identifying, recruiting, and in many cases, assisting minorities to enter West Point. The Corps of Cadets reflects the racial and ethnic composition of our country and offers students a more diversified educational experience. Today, more than one-third of the U.S. Army's enlisted force is comprised of minorities, so there's always a need for officers of all racial and ethnic backgrounds to serve as leaders for our diverse Army. So I'm from Long Island, New York, in a town that's not very diverse to begin with in terms of racial diversity. So it was a bit of a culture shock attending West Point and seeing people from all races, ethnicities, and being exposed to that was actually a great thing for me. I think it really helped to broaden my view of the world and it gave me a better understanding of people and, and where they're coming from. And I think that's helped me throughout my career, uh, both as a, uh, as a physician and an Army officer. It, it was a bit eye-opening to be exposed to so many different people and cultures. We've had cadets from other countries for many, many, many years. 
you know, over 100 years we've had cadets. We, um, so that's, that's always been accepted. But as far as the academy now really hoping for and looking for diversity and specifically targeting diverse audiences to bring into the academy, that's really been happening a lot for at least 20 years. But I see a huge, a huge shift. And just looking at, at the leadership, our, our dean is a female. So we have that diversity. Lots of the department heads are women. So we have, we have diversity in gender, we have diversity in race. New cadets, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. Do solemnly swear. When I was a cadet, we had no women. So that's a big change. Uh, there were fewer uh, minority cadets, I think. We always had graduates from other countries. But that has grown also. The Corps was half the size. There were 2,400 people, and now there's 4,400. These are massive changes. And I think when I was a cadet, we thought nothing ever changed here. And now uniforms have changed. Women are here. Uh, the diversity program is pretty wide. I believe that just as the Army needs to be the Army for all of U.S. citizens, West Point strives to be the Academy for all citizens. And that means being conscientiously and intentionally diverse so that every young person out there can look at West Point and say, maybe I'll go there, I have a place there, I could belong there, I could study there, I could excel there. It's not a matter of what racial group a person is, what religion they are, what gender they are. It's a matter of accomplishing the mission, getting the job done. What's the outcome that we're trying to achieve? And I think West Point, we focus on ideals like duty, honor, country. And in doing that, we make sure people adhere to standards that have no bearing on the color of their skin or where they worship. These are the, the values that West Point lives by, and they're values that incorporate all types of people and really celebrate diversity. I think that's the ethic of the military as well. I haven't had any issues connecting with any of my peers from other cultures that I would have expected. Uh, we have a lot of foreign cadets here, so I met people from all over the world, and some of them come from uh, you know, different religious backgrounds, a lot of uh, Muslim-majority countries, which uh, at first I, I didn't really know too many Muslims growing up. And coming here and really getting to interact with them, I, we have a lot in common and we've gotten along very well. And I think that we've both learned a lot about each other's cultures. Arguably, one of the, I think, big diversity goals that we have is to make sure that we're representative of the population of the United States. Uh, and, or at least certainly of the officer corps that, are, that is in the Army. And so when you look at the percentage of women that we have, in fact, this year, uh, I believe we were at about a 20, we have at least 20%, I think it's closer to 25% uh, that have entered West Point uh, for this plebe class. Uh, we have a variety of different uh, ethnic backgrounds where we have, for example, clubs that are the Native American Heritage Forum, embracing diversity. Uh, I made it through, which I didn't think I'd be able to do when I first showed up. Uh, but overall, I've, I've been able to make a lot of friends and really connect with all the cadets here, which I was worried about when I first came in, uh, just meeting tons of people from all over the country that I'd never known before, but they, they were all great and they all helped me get through this trying time. Everyone starts off where it doesn't really matter where you're from, and it shouldn't. It's all about you're coming from high school or wherever, or prior service, prior, uh, maybe even some from you know, having a few years in college, coming here, they get to start fresh, all as one class, all as family members, essentially, of their respective classes, and get inculcated into the experience that brings them and makes them who they are when they graduate. So I think that's very important that it is very inclusive. West Point has accepted the challenges associated with change and continues to search and select the best from an expanded base. Diversity, breaking the gender barrier, 
uniform changes, the plebe system, academics, and even marching has changed. I was a cadet at West Point during the time of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and so it wasn't just something that was socially unacceptable, but also something that I could have potentially been separated from the Army for. And so I think that that definitely complicated things and prolonged the process of acceptance in myself. It, it wasn't until having more time to myself to think through it during medical school that I accepted the fact and, and worked through some of those difficult issues that, that I had to deal with on my own. Something that I'm glad is not an issue anymore and it's really been amazing over the last five to ten years how quickly we've moved in acceptance. In order to be an effective leader you need to be authentic and living in the shadows like that made people inauthentic and, and really was a barrier between them and their subordinates and it's so great to uh, not have to worry about that anymore. One of the strengths of West Point in particular in the Army in general is its diversity and uh, one sees that all types of diversity that can be racial, ethnic, geographic, socioeconomic, etc. I think for many of us when we come to West Point it's the first time we're exposed to certain demographics or certain types of people. Uh, being a Jewish graduate of West Point, I think for many of the people I interacted with as a cadet, it was the first time they had first-hand experience or interactions with someone of the Jewish faith. When I came to West Point is that I was actually the first Jew that a lot of people had met. And there are a few of us here, but not all of us are everywhere around the country. Um, and growing up, I came from a uh, city with a very high Jewish population uh, and I show up to Beast and my roommate finds out I'm Jewish and he says wow that's that's interesting I've never met a Jew before uh, I was I was just taken aback I, I didn't understand how someone had you know gone their whole life never meeting a Jew when they were so prevalent in my life so we would just spend hours during Beast talking about religion sharing about each other's faiths um, and I can't profess to be an expert in all things Judaism uh, so I you know I would always preface everything I said with that but I think I, I'd like to think that I, I helped him learn a lot about my faith and I learned a lot about his and together I think we really bonded a lot and now we're closer. Prior to the progress in diversity that has occurred in the modern era at West Point, there was one minority present from the very beginning. The very first graduating class at the academy included a Jewish cadet. It is an inclusive environment, so finding the names of the Jewish graduates was not always easy because we didn't always keep track. We didn't keep track of religion. We didn't, we kept track of the state from which they were appointed. We kept track often of their height. We kept track of the name of their senator, but we didn't track information about them specifically based on religion. Jewish people have been involved at West Point since the very beginning. The first class graduated two cadets in 1802, and one of them was Jewish. The fact that West Point has had Jewish graduates dating back to its first class is a further tribute to the diversity of the academy. Half of the first class was Jewish, all one of him. So he was a salutatorian. We're very proud of him for being the salutatorian of the class of 1802. The very well-known joke is that 50% of the first graduating class of West Point was Jewish. But he graduated in the bottom of his class, so we don't talk about him too much. The Jewish cadets experienced slow change over the years as they sought to find a balance between the requirements of army life and their own religious traditions. We entered a class of 30 Jewish cadets. That was a pretty large class at that time. Uh, we graduated about 21, I think, or 22. There was no Jewish chapel, so there was a Protestant chapel and a Catholic chapel, and the Jewish cadets went to chapel on Sunday, and we marched to chapel, and it was the old cadet chapel. When I arrived, first thing we learned was chapel was a required uh, formation every uh, week, and for the Protestant and Catholic cadets, that date was uh, Sunday. And lo and behold, the Jewish cadets also 
assembled to uh, attend Jewish chapel services on Sunday. Assembly formation began at, was at eight o'clock in the morning and we marched to the, the old cadet chapel, which uh, remains, of course, at the, uh, at the cemetery. And uh, we conducted services there with a uh, civilian rabbi who visited uh, once a week on, on Sunday. Until January of 1973, chapel was mandatory, and it was mandatory on a Sunday. So it didn't matter that a person was Jewish and their normal Sabbath would be from Friday sundown till Saturday sundown. Services are Sunday. Uh, a, a group of Jewish graduates uh, and a non-graduate gathered together and arrived at the uh, vision of creating a separate Jewish chapel uh, at West Point. And by 1984, uh, the chapel had been funded with uh, voluntary contributions and very significant contributions from a number of graduates and other respected philanthropists who provided the funding for the chapel as it now stands today and it has become a uh, permanent structure in the West Point community and looked upon as not just the Jewish chapel, but a gathering place for other events. With the building of the Jewish Chapel, a new opportunity for diversity and inclusion for many West Point cadets would allow for a more diverse educational experience. There's not a specific religious uh, chapel for every sect that's out there. And so for this Jewish Chapel, I think it, from what I saw this last summer and the summer before that, it really serves as a beacon for anyone who doesn't quite have a home yet, for them to just come. You don't have to be Jewish to come to these services, so you'll have, or, or to the chaplain's time. So we had folks that were Muslim, folks that were Buddhist or Wiccan, that they just didn't have any place, so they came here. A couple of years ago, there was a Muslim cadet who came to worship at the Jewish chapel and ended up being the head of the choir. So we would go on trips, a Jewish choir trip, and we would have a Muslim cadet leading the choir. And that's as diverse as you're going to be, I would, I would think, in this day and age. In the summer, we have chaplain's time, typically on Wednesdays. But the new cadets come in. It's uh, by jargon known as beast barracks, but it's um, cadet basic training. And it's a pretty tough training. It's the toughest they've had to this point. Wednesdays, or whatever night chaplain's time is, is a two-hour respite. Their cadet leaders march them up here and they get a little time with us. So we feed them, we get to know them, they relax. But the thing I wanted to mention is because of the dietary restrictions for many, many years, when they'd march up the Jewish cadets, they also march up the Muslim cadets. So in the summer, at least for those Wednesday nights, we have a really good opportunity to bond with people with whom one doesn't normally sit down. And I think that's important. And I keep telling the cadets, if we can do that this summer, and you can be friends for two hours now, we can probably continue that, not just the four years of the academy, but further on. So I think that's a really good thing that happens. And remember, we don't have just folks that are from the US. We have international students that are here. Every fall, we have about eight Brazilian students that come. One of them, just this past year, was Jewish and came to every service, participated in our Jewish choir, learned all the songs, knew the songs in Hebrew, but learned all the songs in English, and was a remarkable addition to our community. Once again, the character uh, that we teach goes well beyond our students. It goes to these other countries, and they take that, those values with them. 
which enables us to have those strong relationships with these other countries. So as a cadet here, I have been in the Jewish choir all four years. Uh, this year, I am the director of the Jewish Chapel Choir, and it's a great way to bring the Jewish community together. We're a small, tightly knit community, and this is just a great club for us to come together and really sing about Judaism, sing about the military, and go around the country doing really civil military relations, uh, sharing about the West Point experience, sharing about what it means to be Jewish in the military, being Jewish in the Army and at West Point. And it, it really just is a great outlet for all cadets of really any faith. We have non-Jews, we have Jews, all to coming together just to share in this. It's about coming together and celebrating your your different backgrounds and your diversity and realizing we're all part of this adventure together. In 2019, a milestone has been reached in the continuing march to a diverse cadet population. West Point graduates the 1,000th Jewish cadet in the history of the academy. The West Point Jewish Chapel is eager to recognize this noteworthy occasion as a special moment in the Jewish tradition at West Point. With the graduation of the class of 2019, the West Point Jewish community and the West Point community at large will celebrate the graduation of the 1,000th Jewish graduate. Uh, we're graduating 1,000th Jewish cadet, which is a, a milestone and a marker which we're all pretty proud of. The, the number 1,000 will be strictly uh, an alphabetical selection. I think represents a continuation of the long gray line. We're much more interested in the concept of 1,000 Jewish graduates than we are on the specific individual. Uh, but it's, from our standpoint, an incredible accomplishment. The uh, 1,000 Jewish graduate, I think, more than just the person, is a symbol, maybe even an icon, of uh, those 999 Jewish graduates uh, who preceded him or her. And I think celebrating the 1,000th graduate in an army now that does appreciate diversity and lets people serve with dignity irrespective of who they are or where they come from, I think this is an incredible accomplishment. So yes, we're very proud that we'll have our 1,000th and then we look forward to the second 1,000. Greater diversity in the long gray line is building a stronger core at West Point and the message reaches people at home and around the world. More milestones will be reached by West Point, and each one continues to build a record of accomplishment. The march toward the highest standards and greatest achievements at the Academy is a continuous cadence that reaches to the future. New challenges will be faced, and West Point will respond. And I think it'll be important to continue to have diversity in the military. And that's where diversity comes in, because someone can be a military officer, want to be an infantry officer or go into aviation or what have you and also be connected to multiple sub-communities. For West Point to be able to have the capability to support all of those sub-communities is a real asset. The goal is that they continue to work towards service towards others wherever they may find themselves. From diversity comes strength. We learn from each other we work better when we have people with different thoughts and different ideas and different approaches. And as I look to the future, I hope that military service will become a bigger part of a larger segment of our society. I can never know how my life is going to go, but I, I can definitely hope for the best. And I, having all the tools that West Point has given me and helped me learn and train with and prepare for, I think I'm ready. And I think my peers are ready and we're excited for what's to come. <laughs>